Hi again. Uh, I'm going to do another video, and this time I want to um, demonstrate the use of colour again. But this time I'm going to be doing one of my uh, electrified bowls, the ones that have had marks in. So if we just take a look, this is the bowl after it's just after it's been. Uh, done with the with the electricity, you can see it burns all kinds of in, interesting patterns into the wood, and I intend to scrub this out, colour it, and then the patterns will be filled with a a silver compound, and the colour will be blue, so it will be blue and silver. And hopefully, that should turn out to look quite nice, and then of course it will be lacquered. I haven't decided what to do. The interior with yet or whether I'll actually do a whole video here or I might just do the, the outside uh, that that will be seen later on as uh, I make progress so without further ado uh, I'll pause the video here and I'll mount the piece in the lathe ready to scrub it out and we'll film that being done I'll find the button so I'm using these um, long nose jaws I'm a Patriot Chuck, just open that up a little and uh, I've got a little mark on here, I tend to mark where I mount things, so you've got the little holder here, the little allen key and I've got a pencil mark there which is the position that it came from, that means that I can return the bowl back to the place I had it in before and this helps then um, to keep it as, uh, as centralised as possible. And there should be a little bit of movement on this because I did make it wet. So the first thing I'm going to do is scrub the carbon out of the grooves. I'm using this, uh, yeah, you can see that, this is brass, a brass wire brush. I'm just scrub at that. I think I'll turn the extractor on. Incidentally, is a piece of sycamore, quite nicely marked in, in a couple of parts. A little bit of feathering, um, a bit of coloured wood on it. So it should look quite interesting once it's completed. See now, I'll just bring the camera around a little closer. Let's just angle that. I should let you see. You can see they're quite deep. Some of the uh, some of the burn marks, and yet the smaller sort of filigree type markings. They're very very fine. This is actually um, burned out really really well. The trouble is though, because if you can see, if I just let it have a little spin, you can see it is slightly out of round. So once I actually start working on that again, that will of course cut into some of these marks and, and, and I'll, lose, I'll lose some of it. But I'd rather have it um, reasonably round anyway. I think it looks better in the finish. Most of it seems to be just on this outer edge so it shouldn't be too bad. It's important to try and get as much of the carbon out of the burning. That 
seems to be quite good. So we'll just uh, back the camera off a little bit. Let me angle it. So that we can see the work more now. Drop it all resting. And uh, just get ready now to tidy that up a little bit. Just put my coat on. So I, don't, I like the shape that the bowl is, I don't want to change that. Um, so it's just, a, just just taking some very fine cuts off. We've got a little patch here that's obviously just a fraction lower than the true circle. It doesn't remove too much, still looks quite nice. I don't think I'll worry too much. Can't see too much movement on there. I assume that's showing. Let's just bring the camera to a slightly better angle. Yeah, it does seem to have taken quite a bit of the finer finer markings out of it really. Which is a bit disappointing. Because they did actually look quite good. I think for the rest of it I'll rely on just sandpaper. I may have to re-burn that. Let's see what sandpaper does to it. I'll pause that for a minute.
and running too easily through the carbon there. We actually want to improve these areas because they've been scrubbed out a little bit. But of course it was tracking because if you get water in the carbon, the electricity will track across that much easier. To, oops, oh, that sure gets hot when you hit that short point. Yeah, it looks alright, it's pretty good. Alright, take the nails out. Uh, zoom that out a bit. Now you can see that it's been re redone in parts so it should look okay once it's done now of course the thing is I'll have to uh, I'll have to let it dry now before I can do any more on it and so we'll back later so after the, the reburn and it's uh, had a chance to dry off a little bit more again now I've scrubbed it out and sanded it back and you can see managed to retain some of the finer markings that uh, that were lost in the initial cut and it's it's running fairly true I've just got to trim the base up the little uh, tenon to make that run true but other than that and you can see I just put a little bit of silver in just to see what it would look like it's, uh, it's taken quite nicely so I've got to finish sanding this down now to to 400 because with coloured things you want to make sure you removed every scratch any particularly any scratches that are running around the bowl because they really they really don't look good at all so I'll carry on sanding it a little bit I've just finished doing a 180 give it a go with a 240 fortunately sycamore sands up quite nice as possible when I'm sanding long I like to make sure that the sandpaper is moving at right angles to the bowl's direction that, that introduces the little swirly cuts that you get then rather than lines running around the bowl but of course certain parts of it like the base for instance can't get out like that so you just have to do it bit by hand and you will get a little scratch mark or two in there so you just need to be careful with it make sure that you do as good a job as possible just give that a close look
back a little bit. And reposition that again. Get the air hose and give it a clean. Right, next stage then will be uh, to colour it, so I'll just pause this while I set up ready for colouring. Well the plan for the colour is blue, I'll be using uh, Chestnut's Spirit Stains as usual. Uh, the one that's called blue, which is a kind of a, a cerulean blue. The royal blue, which is more of an ultramarine, so it's a, it's a warmer blue, this is quite a cold blue. And possibly I might um, put a bit of green in as well, just we'll see how that works out when I as I go along. But I always start with the blues. These blues work very well together. They mix nicely. We've got brushes that are dedicated for each colour. But I always put the light one on first. And I just find it works particularly well. as a base colour. Some of the royal blue. That on top. And it looks at the moment as though it's dominating completely the lighter blue underneath now. You know, almost to the point where you think, well, what on earth was the point of putting the other one on? But the magic happens when you go back to the light blue and put that over the top and look at that it absolutely jumps it's almost like opal fantastic colour I love this mix they work so well together try and keep it as, as fairly wet as you can now this is quite green in this area, so I might just try. I can easily wipe it out again. Introducing a little bit of green there, just for some variation. The green like that. And again, back to the light blue over the top of it. To blend it in, and then we'll get a sort of a, an aquamarine colour then out of it, as well as the electric blue overall. Oh yeah, that looks, uh, that's quite stunning in its own way, I like that. Of course this is the time when you notice if you missed any scratch marks. Not looking too bad though. Bit marked here, mind. This isn't too, too fantastic. Bit of a disappointment, but I can always take it down a touch if I need to. Well, oh, that looks alright. And that's the colouring. It doesn't take too long. What a pale area here. Well, wow, that's very scratched. You can see some little scratch marks there. I didn't pick those up. It's the only place, it's just that one spot. There they are. That's a bit annoying. Oh, 
I might try and get them out and go back and colour it again. Must be a little bit of the coarse paper just bit into the wood that much deeper. I do find so many of the pieces that I do, probably because of my own inattention to the detail, required rescuing in one way or another, it can be a bit frustrating. very hard when the wood is natural to see these uh, scratches sometimes. Quite difficult to make sure that you get all of them out. And of course the reason they show up so clearly when you apply colour to them is if you could magnify the scratch it would actually be a lot of fibres in a groove and of course they hold that much more colour so they go darker and they show up more I don't know whether you can actually see them there's probably not anywhere near close enough let's bring it in on here but I, I, don't, I think the lights is probably a highlight you can't really see them that well the important thing is of course is that I can see them I'm going to have to buzz it with the drill the beauty of this is that really it doesn't matter I can colour it again and even if it looks different the end result will still look all right So, 
a little bit of a patch there. Let's see how that works. The blue one, followed by the navy, the royal blue, the ultramarine, and Now hopefully, what I'm hoping for is that once I apply the silver, it will draw the eye sufficiently to, um, to disguise any little flaws that might be remaining in it. We'll see after I've done that, so move back a little again, make sure it's in view. I won't be doing the silver straight away though, I have to let this dry now and uh, once it's dried I will give it a couple of coats of sanding sealer and then apply the silver and the reason is is that the sanding sealer allows me to remove any excess silver that comes outside of the of the black markings and make it look neat because I don't really want the silver coming over the top of the blue that would spoil the look of it so we'll come back to that later